everyone, and welcome to Inside Leather History, a fireside chat. I'm Doug O'Keefe, the host and co-producer of the chats with Mistress Joanne Gaddy. Inside Leather History, a fireside chat is a production of the Leather Archives and Museum. And I'm speaking with Karl Heinz Edel, who is in Mannheim, Germany. Karl Heinz is the first European boot black. So we're very curious to what they have to tell us today. Karl Heinz, tell us a little bit about your growing up, where you're from, your family. Well, I'm pretty average German person, I think. I have German parents. I grew up in Germany pretty much about around here. And there's nothing that special about me, I think. Um, I think I was... 15 when I got into the whole punk rock thing <laughs> so um so I got my first pair of p- pair of boots around then they were from the flea market and they were much too big for me <laughs> and they were very old and the leather um hurt my feet something horrible <laughs> so um yes I started trying to soften them up and that was pretty much the start I never stopped doing boots since then how did you begin doing those boots i just threw everything at them i could find in the basement (laughs) like cream polishes and dubbins and i i made a mess but but it worked in the end because um i i I wore those boots every day (laughs) all day so they softened up from just wearing after all I didn't have them for so long because sometime after I realized that my feet would never get this big. (laughs) Uh, So so I splurged on a new pair then. (laughs) What kind of boots did you buy? Ah, those were Shelly Rangers. I I think they were uh, uh, 10 10 eyelets high. This would be the high version of the old original Shelly boots. Beautiful. Yes, they are. Oh. oh. <laughs> that line, mm, that crinkle around the ankle. I still love those. These are not mine, obviously, because they are huge. But I, I had the short version about this high, I think. Okay. okay. And I loved them to bits. Really, I treated them horribly. <laughs> but I didn't know better. I was young. Well, uh, what does that mean? You treated them horribly. Well, it was, um, we, we mainly wore them as protection at concerts. Um, <laughs> and it, uh, we used to kick beer bottles with them and all that. And uh, that was rather rough on the leather. Uh, if I had treated them better, I would probably still have them. I still have my second pair, <laughs> but not those. When you said that you threw everything at, from the basement at them, what mm-hmm. kinds of things were you using at that point? Everything from the, the thick grease that we used on uh, hiking boots to uh, black shiny stuff that's actually designed for inner city boot, boots, no, shoes, shoes. And there wasn't that much actually, but it just kept going. Um, you see, Germany isn't a wax polish country. <laughs> I could draw you a map of Europe. <laughs> It's, it's, there's different um, places, like the Scandinavians like very heavy greases. And then there's a zone that uses wax polish like from Great Britain down to Portugal. Everything south of the Alps doesn't do much leather care at all. They, they have these horrible quick shine things, don't use them. And Germany and um, around Germany um, is mostly, mostly cream polishes actually. So, oh, and then there's the Alps. (laughs) The Alps is conditioner and wax polish. And yeah, that's pretty much it. But that's what you find in the stores when you go through Europe. I'm surprised. I I did not realize there were so many regional differences. Yes, there are. Then there's the equestrian people who have their own little things and the motorbikers who have their own. So, um. Yeah, it's but but it as long as it works, it's good. So they all do all do the same 
even though people don't really realize that like my mother wouldn't put water on a boot she would be like oh no the salt stains but um she does did use cream polish which has water in the product and it works <laughs> so she does the same thing without realizing that she does put water on her shoes tell me how your desire began how did you begin to learn boot blacking it was my favorite chore as a child actually be before the punk rock boots but then i was the only little punk rock rock kid with shiny boots <laughs> on the second pair that, that was the first pair went to rags but then people around me realized that i didn't get um how do you call it when you hurt your feet in the shoes oh, blisters. Ah, come on. blisters that i was the only one who didn't get blisters with, with the boots in summer so they started asking me what i was doing and i was like oh come on just just give them here <laughs> it's quicker that like that so pretty soon i was doing my friend's boots too and it just kind of spiraled from there i think were there specific products you were using then I think I tried everything I could find. I was really happy when I found my first Kiwi because Germany doesn't have has wax polishes as such. So that's a big difference. Uh, but I never stopped using the cream polish under there. So I usually layer cream for the blackness and a little bit of wax for the extra shine. I think I um, started using colonial products pretty soon because they have a wide range of products and uh, they are available in pretty much every shoe store in germany and i really like them too like they they, they have these thick black pigments in their cream polishes that really saves time in cases where you probably should dye the boot but with that cream polish you you, you can work around it okay. <laughs> if it's um has to be fast as you were doing your friend's boots and you were growing and you were learning about this, what feelings did you have? Glee. <laughs> no, joy, actually. I, um, while I'm boot blacking, I, I, I go all calm. It's like gardening, maybe. It's, um, it's very soothing for me to, to, to touch and polish leather. It's a nice thing to do. And if it works and, 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 and then you get that pop and it shines up and um they are happy about the boot i'm happy about the the the, the result and everybody's just in a better mood than when we started so yeah it's just a very good thing for the soul i think yes and it's sexy <laughs> how is it sexy how is anything sexy i can't tell you that that how, how, I just know it's sexy. It's definitely sexy. I'm wondering how boot blacking is evolving in Europe. I find that boot blacking is dramatically changing here in North America. How are you seeing it there? No, let me ask you, you a question. How is it changing in Northern Europe, uh, Northern America? In North America, we are seeing more recognition mm -hmm. of boot blacks and the talent and the skill and the dedication that boot blacks bring to the community, to the fetish kink leather community. They are beginning to become recognized truly for their value. Hmm. How are you seeing that in Europe? Ha, ah, we're we're still pretty unknown, I think, as a kink. But you can't really ask me about the leather scene because um, there's historical differences <laughs> with the leather clubs. They don't like women in there. No, that's maybe not the right words. Um, but all these clubs, when you look them up uh, online, you you will find the club rules, and they are always something like this is a club for men who are into fetish whatever uh, this is a male homosexual socializing club or whatever 
and um so so, so I'm, I'm i'm a bit of to the side from that so you probably have to ask someone else <laughs> but the general let's go more general with it as far as the value of boot blacking in europe for everyone how are you seeing the reception from other people ah boot blacking is still very rare but people love it sometimes you have to explain what you're doing and why you're doing and uh, but but they're very interested and they love it so yes the reception is good we should have more boot blacks um when i'm out um, doing a night with my friend i have others who <laughs> work with me occasionally um we usually don't get to stop all night um we just start and then people just line up and it's work 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 until the morning which is nice do you find that the people uh value you yes yes definitely i miss it we're still on on, on partial lockdowns due to corona so so it's been it's been too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you work with the other people you mentioned, mm -hmm. how do you train them? They, they tend to just run along alongside me and watch. And, and some of them say, okay, I want to try that. And, but, but most of them have seen me do it so, so often that I don't really have to tell them they know the moves and I answer questions and sometimes I run at them at them for hours and they can't escape. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mentorship for boot blacks. Do you see that in uh, the European community? Mm, there's me and there's Al. <laughs> but uh, other than that. I think there might be one guy in Berlin, but um, not that I know of. I'm doing a lot online, actually. I'm, I'm talking to lots of European boot blacks and people who might want to be boot blacks if they, if they, if they dare to come out and start <laughs> something new. There's uh, two folks in Denmark who actually um, started that, doing their own thing at the club all without me, they were so nervous, <laughs> but I think it went well. And they will do that again when we are allowed to. We also plan to maybe meet up in Hamburg one day. That's a bit in the middle for the British people and the Scandinavian people and the Germans. And yeah, that's pretty much us. I think there's one guy in Poland who might want to come up. But yeah, we are not that many, but it's good. It's starting to look like something. It's uh, better than when I was all alone <laughs> 12 years ago when that was. <laughs> yeah, I was amazed when I heard about um, American boot black culture and that that's the that's contests and all that. And I was like, Ooh, I want to do that too. One day <laughs> I'm going to win such a thing. So um, when I heard that they were doing one, the MSC guys in Belgium, and someone said, come on, you go there. <laughs> you can go there. It's, 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 it's neutral. It's not, strict, not just for males. I just had to go and yes, I had to win it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any intention of perhaps coming here for the boot blacking contest at International Mr. Leather? Actually, no, I'm not interested. Okay. I, I, I got my one thing and that's okay. But I don't want to do contests all the time. I think I'd, I'd rather teach more. Oh, that's beautiful. I, I, I had some... Um, how do, what do you call it, some workshops imagined and lined up before the pandemic hit. There are people who are interested, even people who are not trying or wanting to be bootlegs, just people who want to learn how to shine their own boots properly. And 
that sounds like fun too. <laughs> How do you intend to teach these people boot blacking? I have flip charts. <laughs> I um, could have two days, like a weekend course. I would start with the cow <laughs> and uh, stop with the leather because um, I think the details are really interesting. Most people just see a piece of leather, here it is. But um, it's it's easier to understand what you're doing to the boot if you go through all the steps um, and imagining where the cow starts and where the leather is on the cow and what comes on top of the leather and what happens until to turn this thing into a, into a piece of leather minus the cow. Because there's many people out there who, who say, ah, leather, it's like skin. No, it's not. It's, it's actually not. It's like the third part of your skin in and there's no cow under it keeping it moist and you can't feed it. And uh, it's a dead thing. It's fibers. It's uh, more like paper or wood, actually, than a piece of cow. Yes, I have flip charts. <laughs> what do you feel makes a good boot black? Skills and passion. Both. You definitely have to have both because if you don't love what you're doing, it will show and it will just be a shoe shine. That's that that doesn't work. I mean it's it's different. It is different. I'm not going to explain it. <laughs> it's sexy different. Uh, um and without the skills, you can't do a good job and the customer won't be happy. And if the customer can't be happy with the results, it's not a good boot blacking experience. What skills do people need? They need the skills to do the things they intend to do. I, I don't think everybody needs to be able to do a leather dust repair in the stand or something like that. Just keep it simple if that's what your skill set is. Yeah, don't, don't try to go super fancy when you're new, new. But it sure is nice if you can do a hand shine or bring up a mirror shine in the stand or fix an eyelet that just fell out. Um, but that's, that's more like sprinkles on the cake. You mentioned when we spoke earlier that skills are not enough to be a successful boot black. So Assuming someone comes to the stand with the basic skill set, what else do they need? Well, good boot black loves what they're doing, but they always also have to be friendly or at least not rude. They have to have a little bit of people skills. Like you, you need to be able to talk to your customer. If you don't ever look up, um, it, it will be weird for them. You, you have to be able to read the situation a bit. How, how much touching do these people want? And you have to be able to talk to them. Just, just, just talk to the customer, like ask them about their boots, what they want them done, if they do them at home themselves, what they use on them. A little bit of chit chat. And then if, if, if the person wants to relax in your chair, let them relax. I had someone fall asleep one time. He came up, up. He came up the next day and brought me a cheese platter as a thank you. It <laughs> <laughs> oh, was weird. That was weird, but very sweet. So yes, let them relax or let them talk or whatever. But you have to make your customer comfortable too, I think. And don't promise too much. It's okay if you can just shine them. But try to do your best. Definitely try to do your best with every pair you have. Are there specific products that you prefer to use? No, I have a lot and I like them all. Um, I'm actually not a big fan of Hubert's shoe grease, which will sound weird to Americans, but the smell is strange to Europeans, actually. I, I carry it in my kit and sometimes there's a pair of boots that's that, that talks to me and says okay i want some grease uh, but I, I, I never just slap um hubert's on a european 
pair of boots. I, I let the people smell first. <laughs> and most of them are like, whoa, that sounds, that's like old barbecue <laughs> and not in a good way. So, so I have something more neutral too for European noses. And, and I, 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 I get that too. I don't use a lot of Hubert's. <laughs> there, there's a French wax polish, um, Baran which is very cheap and has a very hard wax in it. It smells nice and it does a perfect job and it's very easy to use actually too. And it's just a fun product. So um, if it brings up, up a mirror shine in like five or, or six layers. So, and um, while the texture in the tin is very thin, so it's possible to just, Put a little bit on your hands and say you have a woman with knee-high boots you know all these little wrinkles you can get, just go over the wink, er, wrinkles and um just highlight those oh it's yeah. nice <laughs> oh it's nice it doesn't stick to that leather for long because wax wax polishes are more for firmer parts of the boot but it's it, it's like applying some lip gloss it just it's just fun for one night or two. <laughs> what personal challenges have you faced as a boot black? The time when I found out that there's, <laughs> there's American boot black contests and I was online, I found out that there's these things and I was talking to someone, don't ask me who, and, and I said, okay, I'd like to try that. And they were like, well, just do. And I'm like, okay, how do I go about this? And they said, just find a leather club or leather bar. So <laughs> I Googled the leather clubs and leather bars and they were all men only. Hmm. That was a bit frustrating. Like, oh, look, the popular kids don't want you to play again. But I did the usual thing and found my own, own phone. There's plenty of mixed fetish parties. So I just talked to some organizers if it would be okay if I came around with my little kid. And they loved it. <laughs> so I just did that. And then Marcus joined, then Iris joined, then people online became interested. And now we're this little nerd group and whatever the popular kids are doing, let them do it. We are having fun. <laughs> do you see that someday these men only events, clubs might be more welcoming of boot blacks like you coming into the situation? Yes, I, I guess they will. Because um, you, you see these clubs are, are having slight problems with uh, not having enough young people because nowadays everybody is dating online so yeah. if you have a fetish or whatever you just put that on the dating app on your of your choice and you'll find people and it's not like when it how it used to, to, to be when you had to go to the leather bar to find someone with a fetish so um I think uh, in the long run, it's, it's, it's a chance for them to open up for a more diverse set of people. Yeah, because boot blacks actually have to be there after all. And um, it's absolutely impossible to boot black online. I tried. It's so horrible. <laughs> I think it would be impossible, wouldn't it? Yes, there's 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 actual actually people who do boot fetish things with they 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 send one boot to the other person and then, but that's that's not for me. No, <laughs> no. When you were competing mm -hmm. for your title, uh, I would like to know what was asked of you. What did you have to do for your contest? Uh, don't uh, don't ask me about the percentages, but most of the points came from the interview. Yes, um, so it was it was an interview about personal stuff and technical questions, which I apparently aced. 
And uh, then, then the next day we were working the stands and there were ballots and every customer could give out points. Um, and I think the judges came around and gave another round of points too, but I didn't, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> there were booths. <laughs> um, I think it was two thirds the interview, one third um, the ballots. From what I've heard, um, the, the, the scores for, for, for the ballot were, were very even between the customers because, oh. uh, between the contestants, because, um, well, European customers are pretty amazed by bootlegs generally. So, so the scores there were very high, but everybody had very high scores. So, yeah, that, that didn't make that much of a difference. It was the same last year, actually, too. How many contestants were there? One, two, three, four. Yes, we were four people. Where was it held? In Belgium, okay. in Antwerpen by MSC. Ah, 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 okay, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. What were your thoughts and your feelings when you won? No, everything I'm, I'm, I'm thinking now, now just sounds arrogant. <laughs> no, please, please tell me. Okay, I knew I'd win. It, um, with this much focus on the points from the interview and the technical questions, it felt a bit like, being an Olympic swimmer, swimmer in a kiddie pool, like sure it was fun, oh, yeah. but um, uh, I'm I'm a professional conservator and restorator. I've trained and worked in museums. <laughs> I can do all these little things a boot black does and a lot more. <laughs> so it was not a contest, not much of a contest, which is part of the reason why I don't want to go to America and do it again. Because this might just happen again. <laughs> it's like um, if, 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 you, if you grew up with a language and you're expected to do a language exam and everybody around you has just learned it, it doesn't feel right. I'm better off teaching. I don't completely agree that because you have an advantage that it's unfair I don't completely agree with that because I think it only shows the talents that you bring. But that's just my opinion. So, mm. because I, I think someone who has learned as much as you have learned and knows as much as you know, should be able to show that. I can show that teaching. That's okay. That's and I'm actually happy judging too, so. Okay. No, I'm I'm good. I, I showed the world that I can get a get a sash, but one is enough for me. <laughs> what advice can you give to a new boot black? Take the tips. Don't take the free drinks. <laughs> <laughs> because at first I was actually hesitant to, to take money for something I love. <laughs> but I was, I was shining boots um, in front of an absent boot booth. Yes, you know, absent, the, the stuff you can light on fire. Well, actually, it's very potent booze. And I was shining shoes next to an absent booth. Um, and I, 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 I didn't want to take money. So someone said, do you, want, do you want one? And I said, yes, okay, I like them. Bring me one. But, but they heard that. So, so I was working and they started lining them up behind me. <sighs> and it was a hot day outside. <laughs> and you, you don't really realize how strong the stuff is. <laughs> so I drank a lot of absinthe in one go, one day. And then I decided that it's really better for my health to just take the tip and <laughs> that's funny yes yeah. <laughs> it wasn't so funny that night but it was funny yes <laughs> well i i can tell you here in north america we are expected to give a generous tip 
mm -hmm. when someone is doing our boots mm -hmm. because we know how hard they work. You have mentioned that there are few cis male boot blacks in Europe. Well, maybe they just don't talk to me. I don't know, but I don't think there are many. Cis male boot blacks. Well, one, two, three, four. Okay, there are a few, but I don't think there's more than 10. Why do you think there are so few? I know of people who are in a relationship with a master slave department. Uh, Dynamic, dynamic, dynamics, the word. Yes. And uh, the slave does the master's boot, but he doesn't want to. He he has to be forced to do it. Uh, that's that's not boot blacking. <laughs> and I know that a few people who sometimes take a brush and a tin of polish to a party, but um, there, there's no one working a chair like like you do or like we do now so yes i have no idea why that is you mentioned that you're welcomed in mixed spaces yes. and and able to do some very quality work in those situations where do you see yourself going maybe in five years or 10 years with your boot blacking probably still the usual places. I like to go to Munich. There's a party organizer who, who does big lush um, baroque events and they love us. And we, we have a little thing going where we get free entry, one, one person per boot black free entry too, and free drinks. And that plus the tips makes for the gas money and the hotel. So that's pretty sweet. And there's a place near Frankfurt where I usually like to go regularly, like once a month. They know us, they like us. <laughs> we get the same deal. <laughs> um, I, I should probably be in Berlin more often, but that place is just, Berlin is big, too big for me. I find it unnerving, this large city. Uh, I want to know where the green stuff grows. I don't, just don't want a city that's so large you can't walk in on one side and out on the other. And yes, we were thinking about Hamburg, but that was before the pandemic. And yeah, let's see where, where it takes me. Barcelona asked me to come, but that's kind of a long way. <laughs> but that would be fun, maybe. Do you see yourself teaching boot blacks all over Europe? Yes. <laughs> yes, please. If they want to. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot online. And I'm talking to many, many people if they want to. And I'm asking, I'm, I'm answering everybody's black questions in the boot black forum and on Facebook, whether they ask me to or not. Do you still feel that you are evolving, that you are growing as a boot black? Not this last year, but yes, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to grow again next year as a boot black because yeah, nothing happened and oh, it was boring. Yeah, the sisters of perpetual indulgence asked for glitter boots that don't shed glitter. That's a project that, that needs some thinking because... Um, mm -hmm. If there's glitter, it definitely has to stay on the boot. Yes, yes. And, but I think I have an idea how that could be possible and I need to try that. So yes, there's room to grow. <laughs> Not that I personally like glitter boots, but hey, if someone wants them, they'll get them. There you go. What was your biggest disaster as a boot black? Oh, uh, I was very, very young as a boot black at the time. And I thought it might be a good idea to, to try using floor wax, you know, which you use to, to wax the floor 
for, for wood um, on a boot. It was not a good idea. What yes. happened? That was horrible. It, 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 it flaked off and it just went on flaking off. Oh. <laughs> it was everywhere and um, and 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 it's uh, it, it um, how do you call, call it? It it, it 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 electrified and it stuck to the hose from the from the vacuum cleaner. So it, it it was it was everywhere. It was um pretty disgusting. Don't do that, kids. It's not a good idea that belongs on the floor and not on your boots. It's just not flexible enough. I know that now, but I, I thought, um, hey, maybe it works. It didn't. I have had the privilege of meeting uh, in Amsterdam, uh, Chrisley de Hound. And, oh, he's lovely. Yes, and I will do an interview with him eventually. Mm -hmm. But to come to the specifics of this question, how are you seeing boot blacking beginning to grow in the various countries? Well, people are interested and uh, no matter where I go, it's the same low percentage of people who are interested, but the interest is there. It's just that it's not an established thing, I think. If there were stairs in the corners, in the clubs, people would know what to do and would probably do it too. But um, as it is now, and you have to make your space before you can even start boot plugging in a location. Yeah. And um, I think that's a bit of barrier yet. So the only way around it is more boot blacking, I guess. <laughs> yes. You have an opportunity right now to speak to boot blacks all over the world who will be watching this interview soon. Mm -hmm. What would you really like them to know about you? Hello, I'm Karl Heinz. I know science. <laughs> I can explain uh, why the things that we do actually work. I mean, a lot of people know what to try if something happens on a boot, but I know the workings behind that. And if you ever, ever wonder uh, why the grease goes rancid, but the wax doesn't, I can tell you that. I can even do a little thing on a blackboard if you want me to. <laughs> yes. Well, please explain. how. Why is that the case? What was it? Ah, because uh, waxes actually are um, completely different from oils and greases on a molecular structure. You see, um, oils and greases um, have calories, waxes don't. And um, if, if we can't eat it, uh, bacteria and mushrooms, uh, mushrooms, bacteria and fungus, thank you. Bacteria and fungus can't eat it too. And that's why um, oils deteriorate, deteriorate in a different way than waxes do. Okay. Um, if a wax gets old, um, you have this long chain of carbon molecules and actually they just fly away. And the rest stays and nothing much happens, but um, an oil, um, a lot goes on there and it goes acidic, acidic while it does that. So, um, it's always safer to use um, waxes than to use oils on your levels. I am very impressed with your scientific knowledge. How did you acquire this? I went to university to study <laughs> restoration and conservation of archeological, ethnological and art historic objects specializing in organic materials <laughs> so ah. yes actually that's that's um university grade boot blacking <laughs> yes i can see your value as a teacher again <laughs> Both of my parents were teachers you learned the art bro <laughs> carl heinz edel i appreciate and i thank you for this amazing interview for Inside Leather History of Fireside Chat.